Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Three days. In three days, this body threatens to shut down the government. A government shutdown is going to affect millions of Americans. A government shutdown is going to affect middle class families at a time when our economy is slowly recovering, at a time where people are just starting to feel a little bit better about their home values, at a time where my constituents in Sacramento County are just now starting to feel a little bit better. Mr. Speaker, we can avoid this. Let's do what our history has shown us we can do. President Ronald Reagan was able to work with Speaker Tip O'Neill and get something done. That's what happens in divided government. President Bill Clinton was able to work with Speaker Newt Gingrich and get something done. That's what happens in divided government. You work together. You listen to each other. You don't play this blame game. You act like adults. Let's start talking and let's start listening to one another. That's what the American public wants. They want Democrats and Republicans to bring their best ideas forward, put those ideas on the table, and put the people first. It's not that hard to do. That's what we teach our kids to do. That's what we do for those of us that have worked in the private sector. That's what American families do every day. They learn how to work together. Now, the House is controlled by Republicans. The Senate is controlled by Democrats. And President Obama was reelected as a Democratic president. This is divided government. So, Mr. Speaker, sit down with the president, sit down with the leadership, put the best ideas forward, and compromise. We can't operate in a my way or the highway mentality, a winner take all mentality, because that's killing this country. The public is watching. And in these next three days, I hope this body acts like adults and we don't start playing the blame game, saying, oh, it's the Republicans' fault, oh, it's the Democrats. You know, that isn't going to get us anywhere. Yesterday, the Senate passed a continuing resolution to keep the government funded for two months. That isn't a solution, but at least it gives us two months to act like adults and put together a real budget. Because at its core, that's what we need to do. The number one job for elected officials, for all of us in this body, is to put together a real budget that takes the best Democratic ideas and the best Republican ideas, puts them together, and puts the American people first. Now, we can, you know, we can listen to all the rhetoric that says, oh, the House has passed a budget and we did it on time, the Senate's passed a budget, the President's passed a budget, but the sad fact is all three budgets are different. How do you operate a business like that? How do you manage your household like that? Let's act like adults and let's go to conference. Let's take those three budgets. Let's figure out a solution and a compromise and agree on one budget. And then bring that back to this body. So yes, the Senate passed a continuing resolution. Mr. Speaker, I'd urge you to bring it to this body today. Give us a chance to vote up or down. If you don't like that resolution, then the Republicans control the House, they'll vote down on it. But give us a chance to vote on it, to vote up or down. That's how this should work. The Senate's passed a farm bill that's important to this country. It's important to my constituents in California and in Sacramento. Give us a chance to vote on that bill, up or down. That's how government should work. We've got to start coming together. Now. Yeah, you know, there are a group of us that are working together. You know, I'm a leader of a group called the Problem Solvers. You know, it's now up to 83 members. It's Democrats and Republicans. We don't agree on everything, but we listen to one another. We put our ideas forward. We want government to work. We want to fix problems, not fight. We want to actually take those ideas. You know, one of the first bills that I passed and I co-sponsored was no budget, no pay which says if we don't actually put a budget together, why should members of this body, why should members of Congress get paid? Nobody else in America gets paid if they don't do their job. Well, this body's not doing their job. No budget, no pay, and we passed it. The Senate passed it, the President signed it into law. So let's actually pass a budget. So if we get two months, if we get three months in funding the government, let's use those three months wisely to pass a budget. The public is watching.